our specialization and skills, we have haphazard champion as our specialization. This gives us a jump skill called ascension. Ascension's main purpose is to pull in enemies in a room. And right off the bat, you might be thinking, why not just use grappling hook? Because grappling hook have a massive AOE. It does a lot of damage. It has low cooldown. It allows you to just run from room to room and pull in all enemies, which is amazing. And it is amazing, but I feel like a lot of the builds I see out there on YouTube and, and other places uses grappling hook or whirlwind in their build. And I, I kind of want to try and make a build that doesn't revolve around grappling hook or whirlwind right now, just to see how it works. And this is what I came up with. Uh, so Ascension on the third row has a mastery called Gravity Force, which, which allows Ascension to pull in enemies within 5.5 yards radius when it lands. And this just, yeah, it feels really good. So for the first mastery, we have fast rebound. Cooldown time is reduced by 10% for each enemy hit. This allows you to go into a room, open all the breaches, jump, pull in all enemies, kill them fast with Mighty Swing and then move on to the next room and then Ascension will definitely be up again. So for the second row, we have Never Skip Leg Day, 60% chance to stun enemies hit for two seconds. What I've found so far is that when you use Ascension and pull in enemies, the pull in effect doesn't cancel the attack animation of the enemies. So Having a 60% chance to stun them just makes it easier to survive because sometimes you pull in a lot of enemies and they all hit you at the same time and you die. I don't feel like it's a problem at all, but I, I've, I've experienced it a couple of times. So this is why I've chosen this one. It's just to avoid those altogether. So it's really rare that you get one shot by all the enemies. So the third row, we have Gravity Force, the most important mastery of this skill. Besides the first one, which allows you to yeah, cast Ascension a lot. And then the fourth row, we have to Glory. Whenever you cast a skill during combat, your luck is increased by three. Fifth row, Blessed Strike, also very important. Your Ancestral Strike chance is lucky allows your Ancestral Strike chance to roll twice and just pick the best roll. So it, it makes your Ancestral Strike chance really, really high. Sixth row, you have Optimization. Whenever you cast Fortunate or Perfect Skill, it allows, allow, always deals the highest possible skill damage. Really good. Seventh row, you have Honorary Sigil of Chivalry. This one is a little bit weird, but I, I feel like it, it, it feels really good to use. And it might be because I'm just doing so much damage right now that I'm outscaling Wrath 10 difficulty a lot. So when mobs are above 25% life, I, I feel like I do so much damage that I, I pretty much just skip the last 25% life and it's never really a problem. Even on elites, when I get them uh, under 25%, and they only take 25% uh, damage. I still feel like I, I can kill them really fast, but once they add more diff uh, a higher difficulty, new content, you might have to play around with this one, with, with some of the other ones on this row. But as of right now, it works really well and it feels good. Last row, you have the perfect warrior. The perfect projectile cast have an, a, a plus four additional projectiles. This doesn't matter to our build, but the next one, perfect melee cast have 100% recast chance. That's just, it feels good. On Mighty Swing, our primary skill, we have Skewering Swing on our first row. The Mighty Swing has 15% chance to skewer. And then we have on the second row, we have the Way of the Warrior. The Mighty Swing deals additional damage. Additional damage is equal to 5% 5, 5 of your max life. It's not a lot, but it just, it, yeah, I don't know. It synergizes better with than the rest of the row, really. So third row, we have uh, practice makes perfect. The mighty swing has an additional 33% critical strike chance. 
additional critical strike chance is equal to a mastery level of the mighty swing again we don't really do crit strike damage all that much this pretty much uh, this build is revolving around essential strike chance so it's just the, for the a lack of a better mastery really in my opinion um fourth row we have make it double the mighty swing has a 15 percent melee recast chance and then for the last row we have make it triple whenever you mighty swing uh, the mighty swing is recast it, re it, it is recast twice it just allows you when you have some melee recast time a chance on gear and then on 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 this mastery it allows you to it feels like mighty swing just goes on a rampage it feels really good as you can see in, in uh in the game page game, gameplay trailer for a secondary skill I've chosen wood stick, but I'm not using it. I'm not really using any secondary skills at all. Um, I don't find it needed at all. I tried to use cadence for a bit, but when it magnifies the cadence, it, it knocks you back. So it actually feels worse than helpful. If that makes sense, it, it doesn't really feel all that great. It, it just pushes you away from the enemies, which allow, uh, makes it harder to to hit it with mighty swing so right now i'm just using essential and mighty mighty swing but you can you can pretty much use whatever you want maybe even whirlwind uh the last row here you have whirling strike which have a small cooldown but it also does a lot of damage but when you pull an enemy with ascension you could maybe use uh this one to to do a lot of damage as well that's a possibility for sure Besides that, that's all we have. So we have Ascension in our support and Mighty Swing in our primary. For attributes, we have a 10 points in seal for 5% ancestral strike chance. Then we have a 63 points in savagery. The main reason why we have 63 points in savagery is for the 25% Reaper damage multiplier. And then at 60 points, you get a certain amount of reaper damage reaper damage is equal to 10 percent of your difference between, uh, difference between your minimum skill damage and your minimum elemental damage in our case because we have the most powerful primordial weapon we have zero elemental damage and a lot of reaper damage due to our shoulders and savagery uh, 25 percent reaper damage multiplier so the difference between the elemental damage and the skill minimum skill damage amounts to 14.3k reaper damage, which is a lot. For the ancestral legacy tree, we have a pain weaver, 10% damage to elites. This is pretty much the only reason why we have it, because we don't do raw damage and we don't have issues with our mana. Besides that, we have air conditioner, which is minus 45% attack speed multiplier aura for all enemies within two yachts this goes well hand in hand with our ascension uh, skill which pulls in all enemies besides that it also helps negate the increased attack speed for all enemies within two yachts on this belt we use this aura to reduce damage taken from all enemies within two yachts but we'll get to back to that once we we see the items Another path you can take in Ancestral Legacy Tree is this way. You get more Magic Find and Slow Mandrite Find and Golders Find. But the main reason why we go this route is to take the Wiper for increased movement speed and attack speed. Let's have a look on items, weapon and stats. For weapon, I've chosen the most powerful Primordial Sword. The reason for that is that it has a very high base damage. And when, once you get it to the Primordial version, you get a positive effect of a 310% Reba damage multiplier. The negative effect in this case is actually not a negative effect at all. Your elemental damage is reduced to zero. And the reason for that is that we have a savagery in our attributes. When you get 60 savagery points, you get a Reba damage is equal to 10% of your difference 
what's the difference between your minimum skill damage and your minimum elemental damage. If we look on our Reaper damage, a minimum Reaper damage, it's, it's 143k Reaper damage, minimum Reaper damage, and a zero elemental damage. The difference between that makes a 14.35k Reaper damage. That's a lot just from attributes alone. And a savagery also at 40 points gives you 25% Reaper damage multiplier. And then besides that, I have these shoulders, a Heavens of Steel, which also gives you max Reaper damage multiplier. So overall, it just amounts to a lot of Reaper damage. And as you can see, all of this Reaper damage amounts to 264k skill damage. That's the highest amount I've personally uh, reached on any of my builds. So, but it might, might be possible to reach higher on with other weapons. I'm not sure, but this is the, the highest I've gone on any of my characters. Let's look on legendaries. Of course, you've just seen Heavens of Steel. I think this is the most important legendary for this build because it, it multiplies Reaper damage. And since all our damage comes from Reaper damage, that's just a lot from a single item. I didn't want to fill out all my slots with legendaries because I didn't want to scare people off to think that you needed all these legendaries to actually make it work. I think the shoulders are the most important part. You can get by with only the shoulders. You, you can even get by without the shoulders, but the shoulders definitely increase your damage a lot. Besides that, I have Young Phoenix Feather, which is a cheat death. And then I have this aura belt, which reduces damage uh, from all mobs within two yards. And it also increases attack speed by 40%. So that doesn't really matter too much because we also have another aura called air conditioner from our ancestral legacy tree, which gives all mobs within two yards at minus 45% attack speed multiplier. Besides that, I'm sure there are other legendaries that would also increase the damage or the survivability of this build, but I just didn't want to use them. And I haven't really found any really. I haven't looked honestly too much into other legendaries because I, I felt like this was the only thing I, I really needed. Besides that, let's let's look on, on stats because I, I feel like that's uh, way easier to show what I actually have on all my items. Uh, if we look on the stat pages instead, I have a lot of max life. It makes me survive hits. And then I have some life leech and some mana leech. And then I have some movement speed and attack speed. And then I've based this build around ancestral strike chance and damage. So I have a lot of ancestral strike chance and damage on my gear. And then besides that, I have a high elite damage reduction and projectile damage reduction. I think that's about it. I don't. Oh, actually, yeah, melee recast chance is also a thing you need on your items. That's the that's the last that that you really need. So if you look at my items, all my items are pretty much have attack speed, melee recast time, uh, chance, max life, uh, ancestral strike chance, ancestral strike damage. Mana Leech, Life Leech, Melee, I already said Melee Recast Chance, uh, Elite Damage Reduction, and Projectile Damage Reduction. And then, of course, uh, Movement Speed. That's pretty much it. And then for Reaver Stat, I have Astorius on all because of the bow. It's made by Astorius. And then Mighty Swing and Savagery in on all items. And that's uh, that's pretty much it for, for items and weapons and stats. Let me just run over the items quickly so you can see all my items if you're interested in trying to mimic it completely. All my items are pretty much plus eight or plus nine. I might have a few who are plus seven. I might be going over these items a little bit quickly, but you can just pause the video if you need to see specific items. 
we'll just go over, over it quickly again. That's it. If you have any questions about the build-in video, drop a comment or catch me live on twitch.tv slash